the boneyard. Don't back us up. <laughs> I never know what day it is, man. I'm terrible for that. So we have a very, very special guest tonight, man. Our friend all the way from Montreal. Please introduce yourselves and give us a little history on uh, what you do. Uh, I'm John Asher. I run uh, Asher Media Relations out of uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I'm a publicist. You can call me a media relations consultant, press agent, um, PR guy, promos. Um, I'm the guy that connects pretty much um, bands with the media for coverage, such as reviews, interviews, radio play, your Spotify ads, um, live reviews, preview coverage, <laughs> um, brand awareness, image awareness. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on for the, what needs to be done for PR when bands finish. It almost their, never stops in that sense, like. Yeah, so I'm 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 the guy that just behind the scenes makes people read or listen um, about the bands, right? To yeah. discover, to use the press as a as a as a tool to discover to reach a new fan base, pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. In, in a short, short <laughs> more to it. There's a hell of a lot more to it uh, to the job, but in short. Yeah, no, I hear you there, like, kind of jumping in the game professionally ourselves, like myself personally, uh, within the last year, there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes that people even probably realize, right? Like, yeah. they just know they buy their ticket and the band comes on stage and then it's over, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the months. A lot of un unsung heroes behind the scenes, you know, from the PR mm -hmm. marketing to the managers to the booking agents to the promoters, you know. Um, there's so many things behind the scenes to break a band, you know, so <laughs> that's the way the industry goes. Yeah. It's definitely cutthroat like that. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, I, myself, the experience I've had, I've been doing this since 2014 and, um, I love it. I, I love all the, the craziness and the chaos and the insanity <laughs> and, um, Ryder Johnson says hi. Oh yeah, I remember Ryder from the uh, unexpectedness <laughs> of the things that go on. <laughs> I toured with Annihilator, and I remember it was Annihilator and U Tank and Matt uh, Mason from Australia. Ryder's band, um, what were they? Uh, Razor, right? Yep. Razor. They opened up the show in Waterloo, I think, I believe, if my nice. memory serves oh, me wow. right. Nice. Yeah, they um his band Ripper just uh, just put together a new album, uh, Red, White, and Ripped, and it comes out on Canada Day. Oh, and nice. Razor's working on an album right now. It should be ready soon. Right on. Yeah, it should it's be. Out. So, 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 how did you get started doing this? <laughs> Wasn't even my plan, but it just happened. <laughs> I, uh, I actually studied corporate PR at McGill, and mm -hmm. I moved to that shit town called Toronto. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went, so I graduated from university, and I went, I left Montreal to go to Toronto, um, and Toronto kind of like, um, it was actually pretty rough out of university. You no, know, nobody gives you jobs, right, even with your piece of paper. Yeah. So uh, I tried to find a job. Um, and then after a while, after a lot of like no's in PR, so I, I just I just decided to come back to Montreal where I was already established in the music scene from my previous endeavors with a band and stuff and being a concert promoter. And I, you know, it wasn't really my plan, but it's like I knew the scene, I knew musicians, I knew PR, and just put them together and see what happens. Yeah. And the original plan was to just be make some noise and then a big company PR company would come and ask me to come work with them. And they never did. I just kept getting clients after clients and just built, built it from there kind of thing from the ground up. Hey, eh? that's yeah, pretty pretty much. so that's what happened. That, you know, maybe yeah. it was meant to be, you know, um, yeah. also music industry doesn't stop for nobody. Mm -mm. No, that's a hundred percent, man. Like, <laughs> no, <it doesn't. laughs> you know, 
<laughs> never really had a vacation where nobody bothered me, so no, twenty four seven on call. Yeah, time yeah. zones. I know, like like yeah. yourself, you work with bands all around the world as well, yeah. right? So yeah. I yeah, I'm up at three, two, three. You know, would sleep for an hour, get up, talk to these people in Moscow, I'll go talk to these people in Australia, right? And <laughs> it's yeah. like it gets to you after a bit, but how do you um, deal with all that? Time management, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Time management and having no life, really. Um, yeah, so no personal life, I understand that. <laughs> the music industry is kind of, it consumes you. If you really want to be in this music industry, and it's not for many, um, you got to sacrifice pretty much everything. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's a 24 7 job. Like, I could be on the road. I could be away. I could be at a funeral. I could be at a wedding. People still bother me even without yeah. any consideration. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just the way it goes. Everybody needs something. It needs to be done. Um, you don't stop. You just don't stop in the music industry, period. No, that's yeah. 100%. Like, I've learned to nap. Like, I nap before, but now I just... I don't sleep anymore. It's just a quick nap. And I got to get up, do this, quick nap, do that, right? When In the mornings now, the guys will drive in the morning because I'm, I'm sleeping in the back of the truck. And then I'll always drive home because I got a good two hours sleep, depending on how far we're going that day, right? <laughs> you get accustomed to it, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much how it goes. Um, that's it. It's time management. Yeah. This, yeah. Is my this is when I sleep. You know, this is when I find some private time. Mm -hmm. You just manage it all in a schedule. That's pretty much what I do. I just I, I, I write it all down on a schedule. What am I doing today? What am I doing tomorrow? What am I doing next week? What am I doing in a month from now? What am I doing from six months from now? I yeah. got it bigger. You know, I already know what I'm doing in six months from now. I'm, I already know what I might be doing by next year. You know, I'm, it, music industry always has you thinking ahead of the game. What do I got to do? So. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. we're months ahead on, on like our bookings and stuff for our show here just alone right like i can only imagine with everything else you do like you said yeah. you know, it's, it's, a year from now what's going on constant right? scheduling like i have a bazillion different schedules for everybody right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. calendar is my my savior it just with lots of reminders of this and that so yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I got three books on the go, and then I'm about to buy a bunch of clocks so I know what time zone it is and other people's <laughs> places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I my I my I have alarms set all day long, um, and I I usually sit down on Sunday and I set my alarms for the entire week, and there's probably thirty or forty throughout the week, so I can completely <laughs> identify with Tim time management and scheduling mm -hmm. for that for sure. You know, especially when, when your job depends on people um, or you being on demand for people. Yeah, you know? it's on call. It's, you know, uh, it's an on call job. Yeah. Like I said, like, nobody leaves you alone, you know. With yeah. them. Really, when I commented funerals, I've been at funerals and my phone could be on vibrate and people are just constantly bothering me. <laughs> I told them I was at a funeral or something, you know, like. Yeah. yeah, they still need something. Well, uh, yeah, work. yeah. So like, okay, message me later. This is what I need in hopes yeah. that you'll message them back at that moment anyway. Yeah. But um, you know, you just you grow some thick skin for this industry, and yeah. uh, that's it. And it's perseverance, and you keep trying. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. You get knocked down a lot. You know, oh, yeah. before, before you get back up. So. Yeah, you you definitely need to have a, a drive to want to be like you you need to want to be in this industry it's kind of like the kitchen it's like a sink or swim yeah. kind of industry you either go in head first and you make it or you you sink within the first couple of weeks that you're in this industry you'll know whether or not you want to be in it yeah you know what were uh what are uh, some of the favorite bands that you've worked with uh, like you still have friendships with them and stuff over the years a lot of them man um, oh yeah all right like I would say Strikers. Strikers, one of my favorites. Those boys um, took me out on the road, and I did like I've done two album promos with them, three, no, two, and they're just the most genuinely nice guys I've come across in the music mm -hmm. industry. Um, and I've toured with them. 
and yeah, it was, it was it's been great to to enjoy the ride, to see them be successful, all that stuff. They're one of my favorite. From overall, it's just bands who got their stuff organized, and they're one of them. You know, mm-hmm. Mortal Guardians, another one out of the states. I really enjoy working. I've been I did their their album this year, and then there's Fuck the Facts, and then there's oh man, the list is so long. There's a <laughs> lot of bands that have worked. You know, and, uh, um, so, for the most part, you retain that friendship I've been finding too a lot. Like, yeah, that too. You know, you make a bond, a friendship too, and that's really important. You know, mm-hmm. and, you know, the music industry is also about building relationships for the long term. A lot of, you know, I see unfortunately some bands just go into the quick, quick kill and get what they want, and then they don't realize, you know. You're in this industry. You're going to be here for 10, 20, 30, 30, 40 years. You know, I don't, you know, it's a long haul. So you got to build and maintain your friendships. And I, I, I like everybody to be my friend. You know, and yeah, it doesn't yeah. always have to be music industry stuff. We can talk hockey. We can talk stuff, other stuff. You know, it could be. Yeah, anything, right. You know, we're work associates, but also friends and hang out at the shows, have some beers, listen to the bands that we love, and. Stuff like that, right? Yeah, so sure. have a barbecue and you know, yeah. sit out by. I've done that band barbecues and mm-hmm. togethers with, you know, we're not necessarily at a show. We're just, you know, hanging in the park or at someone's mm-hmm. house. And, you know, mm-hmm. relationship maintenance is really important in the music industry, you know. So that's another key. So, yeah, this, I, I find that, um, I, I this industry is sorry. I'm watching kids in the park thinking about how family oriented this industry isn't, but how we make families out of this industry, I guess, for yeah, lack of a better true. way to explain it. Yeah, no, everyone's like close knit because the music industry is honestly very small. So um, everyone's every every part of this country has its clique. You know, the East Coast, South Coast, Central Canada has its clique. West Coast has its clique, and everyone's a family. Everyone supports each other, and I've been mm-hmm. involved in a lot of them, and um, that's how it should work. Everyone should just be supporting each other, you know, especially the local scene. I'm a very firm believer on going to local shows and yeah. supporting yeah. the ground a lot. Um, you know, I, I enjoy like three, four, four times a week a show uh, <laughs> supporting the local scene for bands and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Watch them hone their skill and develop and grow too has always been a thing to be like, oh yeah, man, you know, for you've seen bands when they first started out and then four or five years later they're doing even better things. Yeah. You know, it's always yeah. great, you know. So. I like uh I like to be able to say that I've seen bands like Electric Dead forty times and I've seen <laughs> slightly intoxicated forty three times and yeah. you know, I've I, uh, seen Snake River Redemption fifteen times and you know, um, it, it's kind of nice, like you say, to to watch them grow and and hone their skills. Yeah, it's a progress. It's a it's a progressive build. That's how it goes too. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, it's weird how it works though. Like even like we were just talking backstage. I'm on my way to Montreal in two weeks for a big barbecue with a band, couple bands and stuff, right? So yeah, you know. I'm actually, that's my second home is Montreal. I spent just yeah. the first time there as I do here, right? So, yeah. It's been uh, quite the drive, though, for me, but definitely. <laughs> that's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it, though. Anywhere, anywhere in Canada is a drive. That's yeah. so true. <laughs> that's <man>. fair. Yeah. <laughs> I've crossed the country three times and. It's, it's, long, yeah, right? it's never a 10 minute drive to the next town, you know, <laughs> two hours yeah. tour. See, I, yeah. I found a drive where we played Vancouver and then had to play Calgary the next night, and that was 16 hours to get to. Yeah. Wow. It was a 16 hour drive just to play a show, and you play the show in Vancouver and you're out of there. You got to split. Yeah, we got to go. got to go through the Rockies and uh, prepare for anything that anything can go wrong. There's always something that goes wrong along the way. Especially on the road. Yeah, you make it happen. Canada is just one of the the best and worst countries to tour. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do prefer uh, driving through the States as far as that goes. Like, I love Canada and all, but... 
yeah, it's so far and few between, and then like you can run into fucking three feet of snow and then rain the next day. You know, like at least in the states, you get further down, it's sunshine ninety nine percent of the time. <laughs> yeah. Although when I was down in um, San Antonio, I I fucking hate that section of freeway though. Man, I almost died a couple times. I had to jump off, go have a few beers, get a hotel, calm down. I just didn't want to drive anymore, man. I got yeah. there at rush hour, right? And it's eight lanes of traffic, eighty-five miles an hour. <laughs> you know, it's like holy fuck, I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> So, what are some of your favorite venues around Canada? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> I know. That's a put you on the spot question. But, uh, <laughs> honestly, one of my favorites, oh man, well, Montreal, it's right now, it's like Turbo House and Fuss. And then, uh, let's see, Winnipeg's got a beautiful room. Um, what's it called? Um, mm, What's it called? Oh, I'm trying brain fart. What's that guy's name? <laughs> Hold on, I'll get you the name. Yeah, Google no. <laughs> His name is the Burt Cummings Theater in uh, Winnipeg. Oh, nice. The beautiful rooms I've ever been in. That one's really, I believe it's the Burt Cummings. Room. When I'm out there, I'll definitely have to pop in for a pint and check it out. Yeah, that one's really nice in Winnipeg. Um, is it is it that is that the name? I think. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. Uh, anyways, there was this beautiful room in Winnipeg that was really nice. Um. There's well, the Rickshaw Theater in Vancouver is you know legendary for the metal scene and a bunch of other yeah. shows. Um, mm -hmm. The greatest part of town. Um, no but, is. <laughs> but it's still a nice nice venue. It's a nice little theater. Let's see. Uh, Calgary, I like Dickens. Edmonton, I like. Um, it's not called the Starlight Room anymore, but it's this, that that room is really nice. Uh, where else have I been? <laughs> yeah, there's been a good amount, man. And then um, the the M Telus Theater here in Montreal is a really good room yeah. for shows. Um, yeah, and then. London, Ontario, what was that venue called? I forgot that venue. Uh, oh, I would have been there for Guns N' Roses, probably. There's a few good it. venues there. There's the, the Music Hall. There's yeah, the Hall The Office. I think there's, it's a big room. It's a really big room. Uh, uh, Norma Jean's. No, I don't I think, think they're open anymore. I think it was the Music Hall. Yeah, London Music Hall is nice. Uh, Call The Office is really nice, too. I got to see Ale Storm and a Fanimer there. And uh, Crimson Shadows, and what a fucking party that was! I'll be uh, seeing Hailstorm this year in September. Yeah, I haven't seen By them way. yet. <laughs> yeah. Blue Ridge no. Rock Festival got invited down there to do some stuff, right? So. Oh yeah, that one's in Oklahoma, right? Yeah, I think that's where it is. We got a camper and stuff to fucking take. We got a tour going. It's for my birthday actually in September. I'm a couple days after, but it's close enough. <laughs> Whatever, okay. it takes me a whole month to celebrate my birthday. So as long as it's yeah. within the month, you're fine. <laughs> so yeah, checking out. Yeah, there's lots of bands there. Black label will be there and shit. Yeah. So what what are some of your favorite shows that you've put together? Shows. Oh boy. I know. I'm I'm really killing it <laughs> with the questions today. Honestly, the ones that I've really enjoyed, I I work I'm, I'm helping out with the, the Vakken Battle USA stuff, right? I had seen that. I was going to ask you about that. So that's fun. I do the PR for the Canadian one, which is organized by JJ Targalia of Scalpers. Um, and then for the US, I, I do it with Eric Dow of Hellsot. And those are fun to do because, you know, you get so much talent, right? You yeah. really get exposed to, like, all these talents from all different corners of each country and stuff and it's it's really interesting and then to see who the final one that's going to play Vok in open air is really yeah cool. and then they play Vok in open air like i think that was the tank and then you you're seeing all these people and you're like damn this is fun man this is cool you know yeah. and then 
yeah, the, those experiences are always cool. And then, you know, just, I, I think, yeah, it's hard. Like so many have actually there's been my touring with Mutang, my touring with Striker. Those were fun. I like to be to go to tours and festivals and the festivals I yeah. went to are a lot of fun to be at. I get to reconnect with people from other parts of the country and mm -hmm. bands that I, I know. And then we get to all hang out and just have some beers and catch up because you can't, you can't always do it, you know, over the internet and social media. No. Right. Like, I'm an in-person, I like to be in person with people um, and just hang out and stuff and do, you know, so. Yeah, uh, like even you know, more bond, so. Like but before yeah. COVID, I would drive to the band regardless where they were, whether it was Arizona and shit. Like, oh, I'll come see you tomorrow. <laughs> you know, oh, sorry, it's four days. I'll be there in four days, man. You know, then yeah. down you go, right? And then, yeah. I, so. uh, but since all the shit went down, we've had to kind of improvise and kind of stay yeah. relevant. So we're doing it this way for now. But now that the world's opening up, man, it's all going to yeah, be in person. Back again. Normal by next year. You know, it's slowly oh, yeah. opening up now. And I think yeah. by next year, 2022, it'll be more full throttle. Uh, you know, and people should just be patient and wait. Don't rush this. Um, you know, no yeah, we want to do it. this right the first time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's how I see it all. You know, I'm not in a rush to, to go anywhere to I'm not in a rush to go to any shows actually right now. You know? Me neither. I don't have a ticket yet. <laughs> I'm kind of still going to hold out to be like 2022. Yeah, okay, I'm too. back in the scene. I'm going to local shows every day, kind of thing, you know, back into the grind. Mm -hmm. I see this a little vacation, a little bit less running around. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So. So when it comes to the smaller venues or the big festivals, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the little venues or? Yeah, I actually do. I like I like more interactive and more intimate uh, stuff because festivals, I'm it's just too crowded. Like when I did Vok in it, uh, you know, it was overwhelming with like a hundred thousand people in the crowd. You know what I mean? Like it's a clusterfuck. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I like the small like give me a show with 20 to 50 people that's that's where i really like to be and you discover some real gems and stuff uh, yep. that way but i still like the big shows um but i you know i like the small you gotta find balance it out right yeah, you know, yeah. And, and then sometimes it just feels like a more personal touch to it right than being in a crowd of a thousand plus you know at a show that's just my personal take on it you know mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I like. I think I like the balance of both. I mean, I I, I like doing the, the smaller shows. That, like you say, the intimate um, interaction with the bands and stuff like that. Like I got to see Laid to Rest and Well and Wasted, and there was fifteen of us in the bar, and that was including the bands. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I got somebody was, at the door. Hold on. Oh yeah, yeah man, no problem. <laughs> All times of the hour. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. I love when stuff like this happens yeah. in our interviews. <laughs> well, that's the great thing about doing it live. Like you can't. Could, you know, we, could we just could pause or somebody at my uh, my apartment door, like my sure. Oh, yeah. store, then well, I have to go. You do we can jump better. back on here in a minute if you want, man. No All right, give me like yeah, give me like five minutes. I gotta go let. let uh, All right. It's a delivery, so. Yeah, no, it's all good, but <laughs> we'll put him backstage. <laughs> I love when oh, shit like this happens. Man. So, so what's new, TJ? You know, since since we haven't had a meeting in a while, what's going on? <laughs> no, right, lots of shows. So they're sending me away to work like next week. Oh, he's got his dog there. Right on. Oh no! No, nope, oh, okay. Yet. He's just putting his dog in the camera. <laughs> so. Everyone's got their pets. So we got a big yeah. trip going. We got Charlotte and Amanda. Not you, Amanda, but another Amanda coming yeah. to uh, Montreal for the behind the scenes barbecue with Dead Man's Prophecy and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I, I got can a few tricks up now, my sleeve right? yeah, that I haven't mentioned yet. We got a uh, a secret thing going down in August. I don't. I can't say too much about it right now, but that'll be all behind the scenes, fucking backstage. That's fine. Let me know about. Right. I was gonna say, let me know about it backstage. 
Yeah. Um, I know it's the middle of the week, but maybe we'll do like a half hour of work um, after the show. So that uh, we can... Yeah, yeah just waiting. Well, I got to FaceTime a couple people too after you, though. And then yeah, I know. But... Get the show worked out. So <laughs> Get you have the show roll. Oh, yeah, all right. Well. You have to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so our cooking show is still a go, as far as I know. We're just yep. waiting for, we have the menu, so our, our menu is planned around in Vail. So we have a, we're either doing the cabbage rolls, maybe we'll throw the boat out now. Who wants to see us do the Romanian cabbage rolls or stuffed peppers? And then I'm going to do a traditional bread, and then we're going to do um, a traditional Cuban dish. We're just waiting on the menu from from her, right? And then, right on. So that'll All be right, fun. sweet. And yeah, then, that should be fun. Yeah, so our chef is actually a real chef uh i don't know like he's got all his credentials and shit like that he used to cook yep. for the cleveland indians as yeah i know it's gonna be so exciting chef, so we kind of nailed the nailed it with that one <laughs> so yeah that's gonna be really exciting <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm i'm gonna talk to my brother probably tomorrow and uh band in a van should be coming together nicely probably for the middle of july yeah um, I'm kind of playing that one by ear because it's riding on me passing my driver's test. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Otherwise, we're sitting in you. Adam's driveway in the van. We're not traveling across Canada with yeah, him. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> not yet, so, right? Well, no, no. Um, I think I'll do all right, though, because, like, okay, so here's here's a weird thing for you. Driving school or driver's tests, I should yeah, say, yeah. opened yesterday, right? You were allowed yeah. to start doing your driver's test yesterday. So I was like, yeah, that's amazing. But I had seen on driving yeah. school that they don't open till phase two, which is fucking dumb. Why yeah. would the driving school open after the driver's test place? But here's the bonus know. is because... We got to open the, the world, Ontario, got to open three days early. So does the driver's school. So they actually open the morning I do my driver's test. Yeah. So I get three hours of driving with them, and then I go directly into my G2. Like, it, oh, yeah. the, the universe couldn't have wait. treated me any better. Yeah, the universe yeah, yeah. was like, here, you're going to brush up on your driving for three hours, then you're going to go do your test, and then you're going to go home, and you're going to get in your car, and you're going to drive to wherever you want. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of dangerous, actually. <laughs> but whatever. Well, not really. Um, I, I, like, I mean, killed someone today, actually, on the highway. Oh, well, not that's on not purpose, fantastic. But on, you know, I was a dick about it, but they fucking put my signal on. I'm driving a 28 foot fucking trailer with the 550, right? Pulling around. Yeah. Oh, here we go. We'll All right, I'm back. Oh, <laughs> right on. Bring you back in. We're talking about how stupid it is that driving school opens after the driver's ed place opens, like 15 days after. It's actually kind of dumb. Okay. Yeah, but but that's, that's just what we were filling the time with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Can I help you? Okay, I'll watch you from over here because I'm in the middle of doing a show. The joys of homeschooling and oh, working yes, at the you same got your time. Kids with you. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it's nice enough to be outside all day. So, mm. we're outside all day. So. I know personally because all I've done is ever traveled and been on the road since I was like 14 years old, right? So, how do you um, how do you fare for traveling and like being in the, living in your car, or the hotel room, and and not? Uh, I'm, I'm easy, man. I'm so used to it now, right? Like, yeah. Um, you know, you get used to you just get used to it, and just having everything with you on the road. All I need is a laptop to do my job, and then. You know, make sure you have, uh, you know, I've learned from the road is to never get sick. So you make sure you have, like, your, it, I always make sure I have, like, every single cold medicine there can be. You know? <laughs> um, that That's really important. Um, and then try to just get as much sleep as possible where and when you can. When and you then, can. And then try to eat properly, too, man, because all of it balances out, man. But, like, if you don't sleep enough or you're not eating well enough, 
Um, yeah, I see, find the eating's always been my trick. Like, sick on the road's the worst thing, and that's 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 what I've learned. It's just you avoid it, and then like sleeping on a, you know, if you got to sleep on a floor, you sleep on a floor. If you got to sleep in your car, you sleep in your car. I've done that. I've yeah, I sleep family. on the floor now. I don't even own a bed. <laughs> like, you know, um, you know? <laughs> just so when I go to the hotel, it's comfortable. There's a yeah. fucking bed, right? <laughs> when you're touring um, and you don't have the hotel luxury, you just mm -hmm. you crash people's houses or you crash in the van or you crash in the car or yeah. you just try to pull in. You know, I've gone 72 hours no sleep and you just manage that. And then when you're going to crash, you fucking crash. And oh, you're out now. Yeah, there every right. so often I'm out for like 20 hours or I just kind of yeah. wake up, piss, yeah. and then go back to bed, right? As long as you like, like I said, I stress like number one thing is just don't get sick. That you, you mm -hmm. do your best to not get sick. And if you feel like you're getting sick, you you work prevention as much as possible. Like, mm -hmm. being, sick, being sick on the road is the worst. The worst. Yep. No, that's so true. Oh yeah, I've got a bottle of oil of oregano in my purse. I've got one in my travel bag. I've got one in my cupboard. I like I I live on that stuff when I travel. Yeah, because so like you say, prevention is important. I miss the road. I honestly hate being like you know during all this COVID stuff. I've been so stir crazy. Like I'm so character, and I love being at shows and being out. So like I, I'm already working on booking my my trip. I'm going on a trip list as soon as I can. Right? Like yeah. uh, I'm out of here. Yeah, I I'm know. trying to find some tours to hop on. I want to get to Europe again, and I want to get across Canada again, and I just want to go. Just go and meet yeah. people and experience yeah. the shows and do whatever. I'm right there with you on that. Like, yeah, yeah, me too. This has probably too. been the hardest thing. It's not been able to go anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, but now that you kind of can cross Ontario and back or trying to cross country and shit, I'm taking advantage of that right away. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah. I know. Um, I know. Right before all of this hit in 2019, I did 144 shows. Uh, the most I'd ever done in a year. And it was, I, I don't know, like, obviously I didn't know this was going to happen, but it was like, I knew, I guess I crammed in as many as I possibly could, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm glad I did because like, I've literally been sitting on my hands for the last 16 months, just patiently Maybe. waiting. Like my, my Primus tickets were refunded to me a couple of weeks ago. And I was just, I was so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I think I cried a little. Yeah, I'm not like, You know what was that? They'll all be back. They're, yeah, they I know. Need, yeah. They need the financial touring, so yeah, they'll all be back. So I'm not too heartfelt. Like, uh, I'm, I haven't been too hurt that all the shows were canceled. I'm just like, they're gonna be back next year. I'm not worried. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, they're yeah. all gonna be scheduled. There's too much money at stake for a lot of them, so they have to. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's gonna be nice to see like because all these bands have just been working and working and working and like they they haven't been touring like they haven't they haven't had the extra to take up their time when it comes to practicing and putting out albums and like I know TJ and I talk about this a lot. There's gonna be a lot of bands that are just gonna go full force and be way better than they've ever been, you know, because they've been. Hanging around, waiting, just like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, the smart ones, you know. The, I yeah. know some bands who did not take advantage of this time off, mm -hmm. who thought only as being, you know, they were cynical and 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 just being negative about it all. And then some were being positive and made it the best, you know. So, yeah. Um, there is no excuse. I don't care what any band says. There was no excuse not to be creative during this time. Absolutely. No, it's so true, though. But, you know, this was the worst thing. You're just a lazy musician and you should just quit. You know? <laughs> okay? Because this was a golden time to be creative and let the juices flow and just let you know get things done there's you know yep. mm -hmm. no bands who put out albums and were able to record albums through distance anyways yep. COVID. so there's no excuse i have no sympathy for any band that cries that oh it was so tough during covid we couldn't get anything done i don't know man i met a lot of yeah. bands that could get stuff done why mm -hmm. is that, you know we've met a lot of, we've had a lot of bands that 
never even met each other on the show, but they put an album together, you know? Yeah, I'd be proactive so, as part of the music industry, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of, I'd be proactive. So there's do it, it's do or die, so. Uh, yeah. Well, like, like we said earlier, it's a sink or swim industry. You either come in this and you're able to do it or you don't, you know, yeah, you can't. You know, real quick, whether you got it or not, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, like I, I came in as a, as a female writer who doesn't do you know the same thing that everybody else does and it's it's been relatively easy for me but i've seen what it can be like for um people like um you know there's there's a million promoters there's a million bands there's a million bar owners there's a million sound guys there's a million you know there's only there's one of shows me. to go on you know? yeah exactly <laughs> you know there's only one of me so i don't fight too many people to do what i do but it's it's definitely like you said earlier tj it's definitely a cutthroat industry um mm. and i see what it's like for for females in this industry i can imagine what it's like for males in the industry because there's way fucking more of you than there are of us <laughs> so yeah like it's it's interesting to see how people make it don't make it how people get treated how quickly people get snuffed out for the way they treat people it's definitely an interesting industry to be a part of <laughs> yeah what if yeah. you navigate you know navigate through all the filth and the shit yeah. You always find a piece of gold somewhere and you hang on to that, you know, and you go with it. Yeah. You just, it's really, it goes back to relationship building and just, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, networking and knowing who's who, you know, I've gone through this process a bazillion times. You filter out the good people and the bad. It's part of it. I still come across bad people and I come across good people. You just yeah. got them out. You know, they come and they go. Everyone comes and goes. Yeah. yeah. It's balance. Yep. Pretty yeah, pretty much. Balance and 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 uh, lack of attachment. Like I, I know that we we mm. create families and friends and stuff like that in this industry. It's very close, you know. And a lot of the smaller uh, local areas are are very close. Um, yeah, because that's how you know. You gotta start. You know, the local scene is where everybody starts. Yeah, that's right. Forget, nobody, no band should ever forget that. You're nothing without your local scene. No, yeah, absolutely. And then every show when we do have the bands on, who the fuck's in your local scene? Who's playing? Who should we be watching out for? You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, because we got to, you know, kind of. Well, you know, you know, you know, mm -hmm. Everyone their skills on the local scene. Too. So we kind of brag, we'll bring you the local fucking scene from anywhere in the world. You know, even though yeah. we interviewed all these bands, they're all small local bands out of their area. You know, like they're. We're not having fucking Jeff Hatfield and stuff on here, you know what I mean? Like, it's a lot of our bands are indies, you know, unsigned, fucking just trying to make it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, that's that's what it is, you know. So, yeah. who who are you excited to see get back on stage after this year and a half um, break? I guess. Well, the show I was anticipating the most personally was Gojira and Deftones. That was my, um, that was the big two bands that I love to death on a personal yeah. level. And when their show was announced last year, I was super stoked. And then we tried to push it to this year and that didn't happen. I'm hoping that next year it'll happen. <laughs> There's that in Rage Against the Machine. I, got, You know, they were supposed mm -hmm. to play Ottawa too. And I was like super hyped because I hadn't seen Rage Against the Machine since 2007. Yeah. And I was super like, oh, man, it's so going to be good with Zach again. I'm all playing together again. Yeah, those are the, those were probably the two big shows that I was like, don't care what anybody else is doing. I'm leaving. I'm away. Yeah. I'm going to see these shows. I'm don't there. <laughs> yeah, um, that's how I felt about Primus. You know, so those two. And then for locally, I'm just looking forward to actually all the Canadian bands to just start rolling through tours coming well, through. Yeah. I never realized how much I missed just going to the local pub and watching their local dude play while I drink a pint on the on the patio, you know. And yeah. Like, yeah, I just crazy. We seen the people sitting on the patio yesterday when we got our dinner after work and shit. And it was like, oh, that's all I wanted to do. But they were so full because no one... 
you had to make reservations to even get onto the fucking patio, yeah. right? Like, well, but I'm looking forward to like just rekindling everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I haven't seen some people that I used to hang out with oh. all the time of the scene. See at the shows, I haven't seen them in over a year, so I'm looking forward to like you know reconnecting, getting some beers, listening to the bands, and catching up with everybody because I, I don't like to sit on Facebook and try to catch up completely. With mm-hmm. Yeah. I like the one on one. Let's have a beer. Yo, what's been going on with your life? What's new? What did you guys do during COVID? You know what I kind of mean? I've kind of been like distance and just been concentrating on my work and that's it. You know? Yeah, I've been doing the same. I've been writing as much as I can so that by the time the world does open up uh, at a, a regular pace, I guess, I, I can take some time off. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I can actually enjoy the world week. being open again. Before so. all the new shows come on, before the new creators are coming yeah. on, right? I'm taking yeah. three, four days, and then I get back yeah. from that of being in the woods with no communication to the outside world, and then <laughs> I'm off to Montreal to fucking start up again and not stop for another year, you know? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I know. I start driving at the beginning. Like I get my G two at the beginning of next month, and I have like two months worth of road trips planned out already. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody's going to be traveling. It's going to be yeah. Uh, it'll be a good time. Yeah. Well, I homeschool my girls, and I mean, I I write full time, so we can basically be anywhere, and I can work, and they can learn. So we're mm-hmm. uh, we're just. We're just waiting on me passing this test. I was saying earlier that I got like driving yeah. school opened up a couple of days ago and or yesterday and or dri- the driving tests opened up yesterday. Driving school doesn't open up until July 2nd, which is the day I write my test. I yeah. have three hours of driving school right before I write my test. So if I fuck this test up, it's definitely on me. <laughs> <laughs> So, but um, my my brother has a VW bus that he can't drive anymore because his eyes aren't aren't in any condition for him to drive, and uh, he said that we could drive it around and and like use it to interview bands and stuff if we want. But I have to take him with me, and I have to pass my test in order to drive this van. <laughs> so it's just sitting there. He's been working on it, and now the oil's ready to. Everything's ready to go, and I just. Just got to pass that fucking test, man. Yeah. <laughs> Even my car is sitting in the driveway. My little brother bought me a car for Christmas, and it's just sitting there waiting for me. <laughs> so so is there anything that you want to talk about that we haven't asked you during this interview? Um, <laughs> so many things. I know. It's such a loaded question. Well, we can always have you on for another day and we cover all that shit and then another day and then yep. once a month yep. you just come on and <laughs> yep. right. we can certainly do this again and and if you're interested i definitely like to add your uh profile to sofa city sounds as well yeah sure go for it like you know Sweet. more word out there about everybody and everything is good yeah yeah, yeah. support your good. local scene people yeah. But yeah, yeah, a lot of bands just approach me and sometimes just ask what pr is and Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I always explain it, but usually if the band needs to be explained, PR then Carmen usually means they're not ready yet. That too. Yeah, um, I, I believe that some bands should try PR on their own to see how difficult the job it is first, uh, and then you realize, yeah, that's when you, you know, there's certain moments to get PR too. Um, mm-hmm. you know, or now it depends where you are in your career if you're fresh out and have done stuff on your own if not stuff like that so but um yeah i don't know there's there's so many different topics i can go on the man there's it all breaks down you know there's print there's online there's radio you yeah know, and so I got a quick little question since you're a man of many trades here like when you're on the road doing say you're touring with the band are you booking their hotel room and all that on no, top of that or not all that's more a tour manager. Um, you know, usually when I go on the tour, it's just I'm, I'm just joining for the fun. But also, I use the tours to see my media reps, right? Mm-hmm. That's the purpose. I like to connect with all the press guys that I, I know, you know, I talk for, for years and hang with them for a beer, come to the show and stuff like that. So I always use it as an opportunity to get a one-on-one uh, with people you talk to by email or phone all the time, you know? It's yeah. always great to know them in person, 
So that's what I usually use the tour. But if I have to, like I, I've had that question. You got from the band, hey, we need to. I remember during the Mutang tour with Annihilator, I had to find majority. I, I just reached out to all my friends. I'd be like, yo, we need a house to crash at tonight. Can we crash here? Can we crash there? You know, I was the network guy for that. Uh, yeah. to find places to crash. And it was very, honestly, we had pretty much every night we had a friend uh, take us in, which was super nice. And I'll, I never forget those people that, that were generous to let yeah. us take us in, feed us and let us, you know, get showers and all that stuff and sleep on their floors. I always, I always appreciate that. And that goes far with me too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's so. well, my goal in the end, like is to buy land and then, you know, on your way through, fucking stop it. You know, by the way, we got a state yeah. back. I've never you know? that too. Like I've had bands tour and they've stayed with me. Mm -hmm. um, Montreal when they're rolling through, and I don't mind. You know, I no, know how it is. You know, you know they come in. You know, here you go, guys. It's not much room, but there's a couch, there's a floor. You need a shower. You get a bunch of towels. Everybody gets showered up. All that jazz, right? Yeah. So, here's a real yeah. meal. Could be on yeah. the road. It's hard to get a home cooked meal, man. Like I yeah, well, I don't mind. You know, you gotta. Yeah. It's a rough. It's a touring is probably one of the roughest things, which you know the average fan will never understand, because you gotta think about it. These musicians write the music, then record the music, then put out the music, and then they hit the road and they have to set up and take down and drive and. It's, it's, and then, you know, you're not, some of them don't make enough money on the road, you know, it's done at a loss. And it's, it's just a very difficult lifestyle that some people just don't understand or appreciate it, right? So, oh, 100%, you know, like, uh, but I, I remember when I uh, rolled into Virginia, that was the first cooked meal like that uh, in a kitchen where I'm sitting at their table in over a month. I think it was my 30th second day or 34th day on the road. Like every day, just truck stop in a hotel, sleep in the car, stop, do this interview, do that interview, meet these people. <laughs> it was, yeah. When I rolled in, it was the greatest thing. I will never not appreciate that. You know, like, like you're yeah. saying, you never forget that, you know? Yeah, and the, and the friends too. You make a lot of new friends on the road. That mm -hmm. too. I love. I, I love. I'm. I love just making new friends in every new city. Every city. Every day is different, and you make new friends, and it's super mm -hmm. fun and super cool. Yeah. And yeah. So like, I love that I have friends in every single city across Canada. No, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's dude, like I know? can go almost anywhere in the world. And and technically yeah. have a couch to crash on in that sense. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. So, and then along, along with that question too for like the tours, I'll set up the interviews too. Right like when I'm on the road, we'll do. Mm -hmm. I'll let the radio stations do interviews. We'll we'll invite some of the press guys to come to the show to do interviews or live reviews, stuff like that. Hang out with the band. You need that personal approach. The bands mm -hmm. need that personal approach with the media too. You need to. You know, can't all just be internet and stuff. You know, no, it's too impersonal. It, it, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm like yourself. Like I'd rather sit down at a table with you, drink some beers, and shoot the shit than yeah. email every other day or fucking messenger, Instagram, all these different platforms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you to manage, right? Yeah. yeah when yeah, right. Like, when you sit down over a beer, that's where your connection is made. Yeah. Sure. Can I help you? Sorry, it's guys. Definitely important, man. Like that's sort of how the show started was dinner okay, and a go. conversation with pretty well anyone who would come on the show, and then we slowly focused her down to kind of focus on music this year, right? See how that goes. And, yeah. You know, people within the industry and stuff, right? And I wouldn't have it any other way now, you know. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to see where things go after all of us being still for last, this last year and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to be fruitful. I think yeah, so definitely. too, man. Next year is going to be huge. Well. Like, I know. And we're all going to look back and be like, fuck, yeah, remember that? That was shit. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, bullshit all. that was. Yeah. It'll be a thing so. of the past soon enough, right? So. Oh, yeah. So, so where can we find you? Where, where's um, all your... 
everywhere and anywhere. No, um, <laughs> I'm on. Well, of course, the the Fache book. Um, um Facebook.com slash Asher Media Relations, Instagram at Asher Media, Twitter at Asher Media. My email is pretty easy to remember, Asher Media Gmail. Yeah, I love their picture on that. That's how I find you in the yeah. months yeah. of the chaos. I, I, I to find. You just Google, just even Google Asher Media PR and you'll, you'll find it. Comes me. right up. Now, we do have a new email now that we became a legit company and not. So I'll be sending you the new email to be uh, tagging back and forth about fans and having them on the show and stuff. So Yeah, I'll, I'll put all the Sofa City info in there too. Yeah, right now it's my personal email and I'm finding everything I'm getting drowned out. It's not fair to you guys. It's not fair to the fans and stuff. So we went ahead and purchased our domain and all that shit. Got a new email. I'll get that over to you right after the show here, man. Okay. Yeah. Send me a little test email so I know you got her. And then that way, the three of us that run the show, we all look at it now. It's not just my personal shit now. So yeah, yeah. One, so somebody one of three will get people back to will right be away. watching the emails and taking okay. care of that properly now. So yeah. So yeah. well, it's absolutely been a slice, man. Well, I like. Yeah, I'm so tough. so grateful that you were able to do this interview with us today. Mm-hmm. No problem. Thanks for inviting me. Like I always like to chat and make new friends. So this is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, right? Definitely. And then, now I know you're right in Montreal. Next time I'm in town. Yeah, so when you're here, time. just give me a shout. Actually, you know, like yeah, um, yeah. Try to make it out. I'm curious to know what that event is, right? Yeah, uh, maybe we'll have you over for the barbecue and stuff then. Yeah, like, like Saturday um, night. So I'll touch yeah. base with you for sure. We'll arrange something for sure, man. Yeah, just touch base with me, and I'm in the city, so I'm not too far, you know. Oh, perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm like 10 minutes from, uh, more, yeah, 15 minutes from downtown, so yeah, not so bad. So, um, yeah, just hit me up, man. I'll, yeah. Hopefully, there's the bars are good and open, and we can all just fucking yeah, yeah, right. enjoy <laughs> the summer. Yeah, because we're in town for a few days. It's kind of the girls or the women that are coming with me. It's their vacation. They're all on holidays, too. So okay. they were like, we're coming. I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, Where cool. else to go? Memorial, right? Yeah, so, right. Like, let's go party. The rock city rock. Of, <laughs> of Canada, you know. Even, mm-hmm. like, as much as I love the rest of Canada, Montreal just sucks you back in. And- it does, though. I fell in love with it the first time I came there to interview uh, Your Last Wish, man, was my first, oh, yeah. first time. Yeah. Right? And I had a, I don't remember the one night, but I had a blast, man. It was yeah, so they were great. <laughs> and, uh, they, they got, they're seriously talented. They're one of my favorites in like Montreal. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Roxanne and, and Peter. Are, and yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. we became real good friends over the, the past year since I first interviewed them, right? We just yeah. had them they on They were recently. just on the show. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. they were just on the show. Yeah. So yeah, that's funny how, how you feel about Montreal sucking you back in. That's how I feel about Niagara Falls. <laughs> I've been here my whole life, and I moved out to Newfoundland for a year in 2015. And oh, yeah. the, I just like, and it's beautiful, man. I lived on the side of the mountain and right in front of the ocean, and I wanted to oh, come nice. home every day, as much as it was. I loved it out there. It, yeah. Something about oh it's yeah, not- man. There's something about the falls that just Pulls you back in. I was yeah, down there this morning. I oh, considered at one point when I was younger, I was like, oh, Niagara Falls, man, those falls every day. That Because like, growing up as a kid, those vacations, see Niagara yeah. Falls were just magical for me. Oh, yeah. yeah right. I, I was just like, this this is this is this is insane. This is like <laughs> man, nature. And like, it's yeah. that. like, holy yeah. cow. <laughs> yeah, I was down there this morning <laughs> hanging around the falls, man. I, I That's my... My like, I mean, Toronto is my home away from home. I grew up in between here and Toronto because my grandparents lived there, my aunts, my cousins, and stuff. And it was just my mom and I, and then my sisters that lived here in Niagara Falls. So I grew up going back and forth. And I, you know, I tried living in Toronto. I was there for like three months. I came home. Mm-hmm. I lived in St. Catharines with my boyfriend. Came home. I, I went mm-hmm. to Newfoundland with my husband. Came home. You know, like I just, I was always I home. I always I wanted to come home. A lot of the times I never lived anywhere. I like work. I've always had a job that put me in hotels. We were always out of town working. I don't know. I worked for the railroad for a while. Fuck, they had me up in Sault Ste. Marie and stuff for a long time. I was in Wisconsin. You're a road hog. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I always call it a nomad. <laughs> Just yeah. always wandering, right? But I got to say, it, like, Montreal is one city I feel at home when I'm there. And yeah. Not so much Ontario now. A lot of my family has moved out and away from Ontario. So, like, when I first came back to Canada, that's why I moved to Ontario is because my moms and them were here and all that. And they were they moved out six months after I come back. I'm like, well, why the fuck am I still here, right? And then yeah. well, the world shut down. So I've been kind of stuck here for now. But, okay. You yeah. know, Georgia back home, every time I roll into that state, I love that place, man. Yeah. <laughs> On my hit list. Mm-hmm. That's nice there, man. I know quite a few people there. I kind of grew up there off and on my whole life, right? So okay. Back and forth. So I got the dual, so I can work both sides oh, of the nice. border and stuff. Man. So it's, it's paid off in the end, for sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I bet it has. Yeah, just leave it. Here, just well, it definitely conditioned me to do what I do, and that's for sure. <laughs> oh, for <laughs> sure. For sure. You're right, so. for sure. Yeah. Oh, my battery's at 15%. I got yeah. 15 more well, minutes before my phone dies. It's been awesome. I could talk for another hour, but I'm starving. I, I got to eat. And- yeah, I got to yeah. get back to actually people messaging me left and right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I was on Facebook today, and uh, we'll send you the email, and I'll get mm. to you in the next, probably within the next week about Sofa City. Uh, I got to sort out some of the bands that we've got for the books before I move any further, yeah. or I'm going to lose where I am. <laughs> There's so many bands. But um, yeah, we'll definitely keep in touch. We'll do this again. It's yeah. It's been an, a fantastic interview. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks again and for having me. With my boys in town and, and see if it's cool if you come on by. I'm sure there's not going to be a problem. You know what I mean? And we'll have you on over in two weeks. Yeah. But right. either way, I will make it over to wherever you are and have a beer for sure. And, and uh, we'll sit down and have a pint either way. All right. All right. Excellent. Uh, take my us out of here, TJ.